I think John Muir, you wore Court Courtney Dillon out already. Oh Morgan, no, he's good. Beautiful people. Uh, we are continuing with part two of our interview with John Muir, who is, well, you guys know him as John of the Mountains, perhaps, or the father of natural uh, uh, of nat national parks, biotinist, environmental philosopher, zoologist, everything. He's got a lot of ologists in his. Mm -hmm. In his armamentarium. Um, Eric says jack of all trades. Jack of all trades mm -hmm. and master of all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eric, for uh, sticking with us also. I love you very much, of course. Mm -hmm. He loves you too, he says. And we're going to continue with these questions. Number 12, what is going to happen to all the plastic we're putting in the landfills? Is it going to break down to microplastic and make future generations sick? Oh, you know, is there any way to, I, he, to, to he's, like he's, repurpose it? And he's make want, it he's wants to correct this question. Okay. It is already making you sick. Yeah. Yeah. What can we do with the plastic? Is there any way to turn it into something useful? In the future, there will be new technologies to utilize the plastic that is sitting upon your earth. He shows me that there are a couple of children, they're children now, who will um, who have come to take on this mission. Oh. But what he does say is right now it is important to not wait for this time period because you are many of you are literally drowning in your own plastics. It is important to understand that plastic is harmful. Yeah. and not in alignment with the energies of the earth. And you can begin to ask yourself, do I need to use this plastic? The answer will most often be no. Mm -hmm. um, he's also showing me, he's, he, he doesn't mince words, I as you can tell, tell from the first really? person. Well, he also shows me that if we go, if we ourselves go to markets and community gardens, we will not be tempted to buy things that are, are in this type of material, this type of plastic. It's, it's very, very bad for the environment. Well, when so. I was growing up, we didn't have plastic. I mean, I had an aluminum cup that I drank out of, and we had metal and wood toys and things like that. But so is there a replace? I mean, if we shut down all fossil fuel, what will replace plastic to make this, for example, or my charger or my glasses, et cetera? What, will what he's saying is that there will be materials to replace it that haven't been used or invented yet. And he oh. also says that says that many things will return, will return to the original materials, like the materials of earth. Yeah, but you know, then... Then we think of these things as better and there will be still some plastics used in surgery. Um, yeah. uh, like um, he's showing me like within like your knee. I don't know. There must be oh, something. Yeah. Prosthetic. Some, yeah. 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 He's showing me those will probably be continued to be used, but there will be a new laws. It's around 2040 to 2050. Um, more like the, 2042, there should be new laws that are going to be enacted that will, um, it will be moving in a different direction, is what he's saying. Okay. But of course, mm -hmm. then the wood toys and, and, you know, aluminum glass and all that stuff, you know, mining the aluminum and, and taking down the trees, I mean, that's not exactly the best for the environment either. So, you know, it seems like you can't win. Unless you he said he's he says way. he he's responding with the adage where there is a will there is a way meaning if we want to clean up our act we can we have to decide so if we cut down wood to make wooden things to replace plastic things then you're going to have to have a regeneration a tree regeneration he's perfect. responding yeah. to that he has a response to that he he wants to talk about the larger problem that he sees right now of consumerism. Yeah. That they're that buy less people. I hate shopping and buying stuff. That by and large, most people listening to this call today, including all of you listening, I think he's calling us out a little bit, have too many things. Yeah. Are all of these things necessary? For your life. 
are all of these things used to edify your soul? So we have to ask ourselves as we purchase more, as we bring more. Do we really need this? Do we really need it? And I need your husband to watch this. Because I get a lot of anxiety from hoarding, hoarding that he does. And he just gets more and more stuff. And it's like, no, God, I just don't. Mm. I mean, it reminds me of my daughter, uh, my youngest. She went to Peru to volunteer in a, a medical clinic, helping the very impoverished. And she was so struck by how impoverished they were. No shoes, no toys, nothing. But they were the happiest people she had ever seen. So that I think is a testament to what you're exactly what you're saying, John of the Mountains. Okay. Yeah. He's just saying it's like silly. We don't need all this stuff. You know? Zero point energy, I think, will be the one thing, main thing that will save the planet. But I personally believe that we're gonna have to transition slowly from fossil fuels and and do that responsibly, et cetera. I don't think we can jump right into green unless they come up with zero point energy and, you know, right away. And, and you know, I don't know, zero point energy machines in our homes, et cetera. But um, what's your, should we? Well, it's interesting. As you mentioned, the zero point energy Tesla pops in. Hmm. Okay, good, <laughs> I was like, hi, Tesla. Um, oh, oh, him. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Uh, John's Tesla standing over here, but John's going to respond. Um, the zero point energy will be a way or a method that's used in the future. What he says, though, is that. Um, yeah, because fossil fuels, are, there's a there's an they're not um, sustainable. No, for the earth. No. Of course not. But, but they already have. um awareness and all the technology we could possibly need to utilize zero point energy right now. Yeah. But it's being um, guarded you by know. the oil giants probably. And yes. And even some of the green energy conglomerates mm -hmm. probably. So what should we do? Should we slowly get off the, or should we cold Turkey get off of fossil fuels or is that too? No, he's late? not suggesting that. He wants people to think in, you know, we can begin to question how much we are consuming. Yeah, that's so what he, he's asking people, each person listening to this call, because he's saying this call, even he knows this won't appeal to everyone yeah. on, on YouTube. And that's fine. But he's asking people who are listening, who are take heed of what he's trying to suggest today, that we become aware of how we are affecting our personal world and the natural world that we are in contact with. Okay. You know, yeah. he, he, he wants us to really most importantly, think about the ways in which we consume. Yeah. Think about the food you consume. Think about the, the things that you purchase. Is this necessary? Is this a way to edify my life and my soul? Be very um, discerning in what you choose to buy and put in your home and what you choose to wear. Is this a natural material? How is this produced? I am not suggesting that we, you make radical changes in this very moment, but I'm asking that over a period of time, you begin to become very aware of, in the, of the ways in which you affect the world. Each person can make a difference if they choose to. Yeah. I think the main thing is when we do take things from earth, that we not change them into something toxic for one thing, but also that we regenerate things like the animals and the plants and the soil and the trees and all that stuff. Right. And that, I think that's, that's super important to me. And regenerate he, clean water. He agrees because what he's saying is that what we are doing is very short sighted. He calls it short sighted because it's about money. That's what people see. Yes, greed. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, for example, soil now is different. We it doesn't have the nutrients that are then transferred to plants and animals that we once had. 
So how, what do you do about that? This is a return to communities and the old ways of living. I suggest that over as changes accelerate on the planet in the next three years, I suggest and see that many people will want to find a simpler way of living in community with others. I say this not to scare you, but to prepare you for the changes at hand. Yeah. Yeah. For it, is, here, yeah. it is to understand that many will leave densely populated cities in favor of land. On this land, communities will come together and begin to grow food and mm-hmm. will share in the responsibilities of growing of this food. Is it, it is important that you take your head out of the sand, as you say now, and begin to look at ways in which you can understand how to grow food, how to replenish soil. It is difficult because many of you are working, and I'm not suggesting you do this all at once, but take the power back in your own hands and begin to understand that you have the power to create a more a cleaner and more beautiful planet. Yeah, they raise livestock in a way that is not profit driven. So they're pumped with hormones and all sorts of things. So yeah, it's a problem. The biggest thing other than being aware of the ways in which you consume and the amount of things you buy is to become aware of how the food you are eating affects your physical body yeah and how the food you are eating affects the natural world for there is currently no balance among these systems if you simply began to understand that the food i consume affects my physical body in such a way that i want to eat clean and pure food you would change the entire system because you would refuse to participate in those who are motivated by greed and corporate profits. I know. There's just so much irresponsibility. One time I went to the Exumas and snorkeled. It was just beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Did some diving, took all the kids. And then a couple of years later, went back. It was beautiful. Went back again, and there was I found a diaper and a coral reef, and just all sorts of stuff on the beaches. It just sickened me. So the health of our oceans, I'm quite worried about. So, will rewilding projects be larger and more popular in the future? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. Can you say it again? Will, will rewilding? I, guess, I don't know what projects be larger. I'm gonna look that up and more popular in the future. What you re what you refer to as rewilding, I refer to as a return. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. There will be more he calls it foraging. Um, rewilding looks to me like he's showing me um reintroduction of native plants in specific areas. Yeah. That's what I think this is. I don't, I'm not, that's what he's showing me. So I could be saying this wrong. So sorry if I am. You, if you're looking at well, I think I think you're right. That's uh, what he's saying. Let's see. What is rewilding? I know one of my um neighbors has a ranch and he repopulated everything with with um natural natural it will be all yes it's uh, to me what he's showing me is it looks like that there's you know particular plants that are native and grow best in particular areas and and it will be like um that will be more focused on there's also going to be a return for people who are going to be interested in things like foraging natural plants okay. and herbs and things like that so yes i think that answers the question rewilding is a progressive approach to conservation it's about letting nature take care of itself enabling mm-hmm. natural processes to shape land and sea repair damaged ecosystems and restore degraded landscapes through rewilding that's hard to say wildlife's natural rhythms create wilder more biodiverse habitats that just sounds beautiful mm-hmm. well he's he's saying um but it also looks like there's like, yeah, 
what he, there, I don't know what you call when he's putting in more natural plants, but he's showing me yeah, that too. Native, native yeah. species. What he's saying is that um, the that what we refer to as nature is an intelligence. Yeah. Our body is part of this intelligence as just as the body has a capacity to heal. We also can rely on the laws of the universe and the laws of the natural world to begin to repair themselves. But we must um, work in um, work as a servant to this land. Yeah. Yeah, it says nature knows best when it comes to survival and self-governance. That's the mm -hmm. intelligence bit that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that's that'd be cool. All right, last question and we'll close. This is probably the most important question of all. Mm -hmm. What's going on with my knockout roses? They never have done well. Except <laughs> that we had a horrible, horrible long freeze and then they came back beautiful. And then What's wrong with them, Eric? Mr. Mm. He can see he can speak to this. What uh, there are some difficult weather patterns and the roses are not um, like it looks like the heat with the cold and it's very erratic where you are. Yeah, but in um, other places in Houston, they're looking good. Is something wrong with my soil? Is it something wrong with this? Uh, two things, two things. There is something not every place in Houston has good roses, by the way, but yeah, something I know. the hot with the cold is causing problems. Your soil, he shows me, looks new, um, deficient, yeah, in nutrients. So he, he's showing me putting like, um, some, some things to improve the soil where you are. It'd I've done very, so very much, hot. I've done earthworms, I've uh, put some uh, like fish oil emulsion, I've put. I've gotten it tested, and I can't remember what the levels are, but it's just uh, so ugly. You can work with, um, have you worked with the beings that? Oh no, maybe I should, because that's what they're that's what that that's what they're telling me. You can oh, ask them to help regenerate the soil. That you know how to do this. You know how to do this with your okay. scale. I'll do it. Yeah, there you go. I'll do it. All right. Thank you. You guys check mm -hmm. out Courtney at CourtneyDillon.com. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. We're going to have to have a part three because I didn't finish, but there would be too much. We'd go way over if I continue. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. And thank you, Eric. I love you. I love you all. And yeah, hit the notification bell for part three. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.